After hearing what Mark Roos, basically the president of General Motors, had to say about electrification and about what Toyota is doing, I've got to say, I'm impressed. And what he said about Toyota really shows how far ahead General Motors are when it comes to electrification and when it comes to having a successful strategy, which will enable them to stave off bankruptcy and likely exist in 10 years time from now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. And I'd love to see all of you, or as many as possible of you, at Fully Charged Live in March here in Sydney and also in April in London, then again in San Diego in October, all of course in 2023. If you can make it, that would be awesome. I'll put a 10% discount code in the description below to the Sydney show. I'll also have a code for the shows in London and in North America later on in the year. In a recent interview, General Motors, President Mark Roos went over what Toyota is doing wrong. Now, he didn't come out and directly say Toyota is doing this wrong, but he did kind of allude to other automakers who he believes have the wrong strategy. I completely agree with him. Now, why does he say they have the wrong strategy? One big key reason. Now, when I talk about this reason, keep in mind, of course, many of you watching this channel would already know this, but many of you wouldn't. Toyota is the most indebted company, period on the face of planet Earth, okay? They only have a limited amount of money that they can spend. Why do I say that? Because, okay, Japan as a country is the most indebted country on the face of the Earth. When it comes to comparing Japan's debt to GDP, the ratio is far higher than any other country, any. Japan has 10 trillion US dollars in debt, 10 trillion US dollars in debt. And its economy is continuing to shrink. It's not growing. What does that mean? Well, the Japanese government can't bail out Toyota when it goes belly up. When eventually people decide they don't want gasoline-powered vehicles anymore and Toyota doesn't have a lot much else to offer them, they will start deserting Toyota in droves. That's what will happen. So it's going to be tricky for Toyota because they put all their money basically into most of their money into the hat of hybrids, hydrogen cars, and plug-in hybrids, not much into EVs. Speaking with Business Insider, Roos first discussed hybrids. A lot of people still think they're the best option and a good stepping stone, he said. Pretty clear he's making a reference to Toyota. The only real company in the world that's saying that right now, what he said, the only one who's directly saying what he said is Toyota. So I think this is a direct jab at them. Automakers like Toyota are still heavily invested in hybrids and continue to prioritize them over fully electric vehicles. Of Toyota's 20 plus worldwide models, Inside EV says only one of them is all electric, the BZ4X. And well, if you look at the numbers, less than 0.1% of Toyota's global vehicle sales are electric. Roos believes they are unnecessary, a waste of money in terms of investment for a car company in 2022 and insists that GM has no plans to dilute its investment into electrification with hybrids. Now, you can see the point here. I actually think Toyota's strategy of having hybrids 10 years ago and even five years ago was a good one. The reality is that 10 years ago, the cost to build an EV was way too high for the average person to be able to afford and own one. Yes, there was the Nissan Leaf, but that was a pretty subpar vehicle, and that's not going to fit the needs of probably most people. So I can kind of understand where Toyota was coming from then, but then when the technology came, and Toyota continued to deny that the technology existed, even though companies in China were selling EVs at affordable prices on par with gasoline-powered vehicles now, and they have been doing that for years, Toyota still kept saying publicly the technology wasn't there to make EVs affordable, or basically they just disclosed the fact that they didn't have it and other companies did, which might be true if you think about it. I mean, Toyota does have a vehicle now, the Toyota Corolla or the BZ3 or whatever you want to call it, that they sell in China, but they don't make it. 
BYD and FAW make it. In fact, BYD basically makes it. Now you might be thinking, well, General Motors, are you telling the full truth here? And you'd be right. They're not really. They do and are investing in a hybrid. In fact, I believe it's going to be a plug-in hybrid version of the C8 Corvette that's going to come out next year. In fact, I made a video of one that burnt itself to the ground, and I'm talking incinerated itself. If there was a driver, that guy is long dead. I mean, the car was literally... The only way you could know, the only way you could possibly know that there was ever a car there, even in the first place, was the alloy wheels. That was essentially all that was left. Now, I'll put a link in the description below. You've got to see that video. To be fair, though, that's only one model of car. It's a really niche minor car. It's sort of like a Ferrari-level type car. You know, very, very, very small numbers of those will sell. So I'm not really sure that that's indicative of GM's strategy. I think they're basically telling more or less the truth that they are investing as much as they can right now. Well, manufacturers like Ford divide their internal combustion and electric divisions. Inside EV says that Roos thinks it's best for them to coexist. So he's basically thinks that Ford's strategy of having the electric division here over in a different factory, the gasoline division here in a different factory is bad. Probably He probably thinks it's bad for morale. That's what I've pointed out. And it is. I mean, everyone in this internal combustion engine factory knows that their days are numbered. I mean, look at Stellantis. Stellantis' is a gasoline-powered factory, massive one. One of the biggest factories in North America just shut down. It doesn't make EVs. Uh, demand is going down for those cars that they make. It shuts down. It's just a matter of time before Ford's division that makes non-EVs shuts down. And Ford have said they're firing thousands of staff. They've said they're going to fire more than 8,000 staff. It's just a matter of time before those guys, uh, Ford says, see you later, sayonara. So I can see why morale and probably therefore efficiency and production would go down over time. Maybe that's what GM is saying is going to happen at Ford. Don't know. What do you think? Now, GM says that he believes different departments should not be segregated and that he wants employees to be able to go back and forth sharing ideas. I'm not sure how it actually works on the factory floor and if GM does in fact foster that kind of innovation where he, you know, the average employee, your ideas are all heard and they want to hear about your ideas. I'm a bit doubtful that that's true, but to some degree it probably is. So whatever degree that is, that's a good thing. I actually like what GM is saying here and I agree with it. And I've been saying this for a while now. I don't think Ford strategy is a good one in this way because Ford strategy is simply to fire, and they've admitted this, to fire their gasoline-powered engine workers, engineers that work on gasoline-powered engines, they're just firing them. I've told you about this many times now. They're simply firing staff. What about retraining them? Some of these staff have probably got really great attitudes. They're probably people who want to learn. They're probably people who want to use what they do know into the electric division or into the new division of Ford. Now, maybe you can identify who those people are right, rather than just like firing them en masse, which is what's happened. Royce also addressed the charging industry consolidation. A lot of charging startups have emerged in recent years. However, many are merging together. He doesn't think it's a bad thing, and he believes partnerships are important for delivering adequate charging infrastructure. Now, remember, General Motors did try to make a partnership with Nikola. Hmm. Many people made many YouTube videos saying, GM, what are you doing? These guys are scammers. They're frauds. And GM, well, doesn't watch YouTube. Anyhow, Royce said it was frustrating that buyers are deterred from buying EVs due to the charging experience. Although he admitted it's not perfect, he stated that GM's EVs are designed to go as far as its internal combustion engine vehicles. Plus, the majority of charging is done at home overnight. In fact, more than 95%, with most EV owners having to rely on public infrastructure only occasionally. Now, is it true that GM's vehicles can do as much range as its internal combustion engine vehicles. No, not today. Will it be eventually? Yes, absolutely. But is it true today? No. But here's the good thing. GM are investing massively in EV chargers. They're doing what Ford's doing, Tesla are doing, investing literally billions of dollars into an EV charging networks. You guys in the US are going to have so many chargers, it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be not ridiculous in a, in a bad way. I mean ridiculous in a good way. That's exciting stuff. Now, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you agree with GM here? I think pretty much what they're saying makes a lot of sense. I'm thinking that Mary Barra has maybe thought, you know, 
maybe I should stop saying some ridiculous things like things, making promises that are never going to happen. Maybe I should just let Mark, you know, say some stuff that actually makes sense. That's what I'm saying. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.